Hello and welcome to Dawn Corus Writes. I'm Dawn and I will be writing Reckless Ladybug fan fiction. This is my first series on Reckless called Meeting Under the Stars. So make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and I would love to hear your comments down below. So sit back, listen to the audio version of Meeting Under the Stars. Meeting Under the Stars, Chapter 1, Marinette's POV Marinette lifted the hatch with one hand and balanced a plate of baked goods in the other. Leftovers from the day's sales from the parents' bakery were waiting for her on the kitchen counter. She took the last step into her bedroom and carefully lowered the wooden door, so not to disturb the household. It was late. The moonlight cast silver rays through a large window which led out to the balcony. Across a mezzanine bed and down to a studio below, blending in with the warm light from her work lamp and a single candle burning on her coffee table. It filled the air with a subtle scent of ginger, cinnamon and the sweet undertow of brown sugar. To her it was the smell of autumn as it started to shift towards winter. The Akuma fight had been a long one, lasting hours battling back and forth with only her and Shat fighting against the Phoenix Sunbears lackeys. They were no longer called them victims. The local supporters of Hawkmoth's newest partner understood exactly what they were doing, growing bolder with each battle. She slid the plate on the coffee table next to the candle and threw down two pillows from her chaise long onto a thick rug. One had a hand-stitched black umbrella sewn onto a polka-dotted pink fabric she had made almost six years ago. Wow, had it been, really been that long, she muttered to herself. The other was a black pillow with a hand-stitched white outline of a shack. It was a simple design and as soon as Kitty had seen it, claimed it was his forever. The memory brought a smile to her face and for a brief moment she caught a glimpse of his scent issuing out of the cosy cushion before it landed down next to hers. Her body ached with exhaustion and her mind kept replaying over recent events where she and Kitty had failed and succeeded, learning as much as she could from this new enemy. Her body slumped down onto the floor, stretching out from side to side. She lifted her hand up and grabbed one of the nearest sweet treats. She picked at the flaky and pastry, feeling the thin layer dissolve on her tongue and the caramel almonds giving her spirits a quick shot of pleasure. I hope you're intending to leave one of those for me, princess. A wide grin spread across her face at the sound of his voice filling the silence, followed by a dull thud as his feet touched down. His tall, muscular frame of a man instead of a boy created a shadow over her where there used to be moonlight. Hello, Kitty. She patted to the spot on the floor next to her. I picked up extras. That was a long one for you. After all these years, she longed to speak the words us instead of you when he visited her after her battle. To tell him that she was here, his ladybug, that the woman, his friend, was his partner, his best friend. She wanted to tell him that she knew how he felt, the worry, the stress of the near misses, and the one mistake would mean all the true victims of Paris would never return the price of being a so-called superhero. But as they lay on their backs, body and mind recovering, they would regard themselves as lucky and not heroes. His leather-clad arm stretched over her and picked up one of the pastries as he collapsed onto his spot, his head absorbing into his pillow as she leant on hers, picking at the sugary parts. She heard him let out a long slap, sigh and waited for him to speak. When she'd been 14, they had naturally developed a form of friendship, being Marinette with Chat Navarre, speaking to each other during battles, and even once he had confessed his love of Ladybug. And yet, it wasn't until the battle where both her parents had been kumatized and Kiki had succumbed to sugar, had they really started to talk. That night he had dropped by on the balcony to check that she and her family were okay. For the first time, she had seen the burden of self-doubt weighing heavy on his shoulders. She had felt foolish for not seeing this side of Shat before, 
and how the jokes he played were sometimes the real master. She wondered if he had anyone to discuss it all with, knowing herself the price of secrecy. In the end, she had turned to Alia and disclosed her ladybug identity, believing she had to seem strong to Shad, that she was indeed worthy of being a guardian. Back then, he had loved an idol, this perfect being, and wouldn't hear of her having faults or fears. She believed she was protecting him, but in reality, she had cut him out and failed her friend. This way, she thought, he could have someone to listen to him, and she gained insight into the needs of her partner. Bit by bit, she discovered little details of her friend and how lonely his life was at times. It wasn't until after the last battle of Shadow Moth they had managed to take down one half of the enemy's team, but crumpling the bone in the process. Shat started to rely on Marinette and the comfort of their meetings under the stars. Now, after the majority of Akuma fights, she would leave her window open at night with a plate of pastries waiting for him, willing him to talk and for her to listen. Princess? Yes, Kitty. Is this spiced apple I'm tasting? Yes, Papa is trying a new recipe out. I like it. Chat let out a happy sigh, showing he might be ready to talk soon. I'll pass it on to him. I think autumn might be one of my favourite seasons. The colours, the change in temperature, but mostly the flavours and smells. He inhaled deeply the scent of the candle. From the corner of her eyes, she could watch the warm glow glistening off his magical leather suit, rippling across the indents of his muscles. The rhythm of his breathing, which was fast at first, began to slow and become deeper. He had remarked in the candle last time, and Marinette made sure to get another for the next hangout. She smiled at another similarity they shared. She couldn't help but giggle at the exaggerated noises he made as he licked his fingers. That was a Perfect. What's next? He rolled onto his side, facing his princess. I saw that. What? Trying to hold a hint of innocence. The look. I would have thought by now, being twenty and old, you might have outgrown the chat buttons. What? And have you missing out? I know it. How much you secretly enjoy them. Oh yeah, absolutely. You found me out after all this time, my kitty. Marinette turned on the side and saw his glowing green eyes staring back. Her expression had changed from a smirk to a soft smile. He leaned in a little closer, stretching out his arm over her, holding her gaze. Just when their faces were an inch apart, he pulled his arm back and quickly shoved the largest mouthful of pastry into his mouth. A puff of ice and sugar billowed around them, drifting onto the exposed skin. Charming, Shat! What a prince! He burst out laughing. Shat struggled to contain the enthusiastic mouthful amongst the shuffles. You know you love me, you princess. She reached out for a mouthful of water and cleared his throat. In a way, she did love her, Shat. Her kitty. But in the two years of becoming closer to her partner, she never allowed herself the freedom to explore her feelings. The only future they could have would be one when they discovered the man behind the mask. Until then, it wasn't safe to do so. Marinette knew she had to guard her heart from this man who, if he asked, she might give it freely. However, now was not the time to think about such things. For the last three years, life had become difficult enough without adding romance into it. She had gotten to a great place with Adrian, becoming close friends as he moved out of his controlling home and in with Ali and Nemo. She could talk to him now, hang out together, just the two of them. And in fact, he was the one who offered to help her in, in her aim to become faster, fitter. She had said that it was to help to reduce stress, but in fact, discovered she gained extra time from transforming back when she was Ladybug by making the whole of her stronger. She let out an internal grumble at the idea of a morning run with him tomorrow. No, she was resigned to the fact that they were only ever going to be good friends. Luca was now dating Zoe, 
both of which were attending art college with her. There had been a few dates with fellow students, but each time faced the same problem of being ladybug. No, now was not the time for that. She had a friend, stolen peaceful moments like this one, and the ever-growing demand of studies and saving Paris on a regular basis. Princess? Yes? Sorry, did you say something? Your mind was on his travels again. I'm listening. Refresh me again. I was asking how your designs are going for the winter exhibition. I think someone might be a little tired tonight for chatting. He wiggled his eyebrows, resulting in a tiny chuckle. No. Oh, I'm not tired, she said through a yawn. I'm listening. He watched her eyelids drifting shut as he brushed away a row piece of hair from her face. Time for bed, I think. Jack manoeuvred onto his knees and scooped his princess into his arms. Marinette wrapped an arm around his neck and nuzzled into his chest, breathing in a scent of sugar, butter and his own personal musk. But we didn't get to talk. In one move, he jumped up to the mezzanine and laid her gently down onto the bed and pulled the blankets over her. I'm good. I promise. Sweet dreams, my princess. He brushed her hair back one last time from across her face and leaned in, attempting to place a kiss on her forehead, but something stopped him. He angled backwards and let out a sigh, pushing open the window, but felt resistance in his tail. Kitty, stay, please. She repeated the same gesture, patting the space next to her in the bed. He was holding something back and she could feel it. At least this way he wouldn't be alone. He heard the light shut above them before lowering himself down. The, de the bed dipped in the middle with extra pressure of his body and instinctively Marinette rolled over and laid her head onto his chest. The sensation of safety, being needed, wanted, was all-encompassing as he wrapped his arms across her shoulders, enveloping her deeply into his chest. <sighs> Good night, my kitty, she said through you on, stroking her fingers lightly across his chest, the tiny dents in the leather tickling his fingertips. Her sleepy mind drifted lightly across the calm sea of their now slowing breathing until she felt the shudder of his chest. Small waves at first and then one large one crashed between them. She wanted to lift her head up and gaze at him, to read his mind, to brush away the tears that were now soaking into his mask and down his face, to be the one who kissed the sorrow away. But she couldn't. She wouldn't take that step and break what they had formed, not knowing where it might lead. She wasn't even sure he would welcome it from her as Marinette. Maybe a while back as Ladybug, but even that had changed between them. Without looking, her hand drifted up towards his cheek, soaked in tears. Gently, she glided her thumb across his cheekbone, rubbing away the pain. He released one of his hands from around her back and pressed it into a loving gesture as his head leaned against it, sandwiching her hand in between. For the first time, she noticed the jagged sensation of stubble, making her aware of the man beneath the mask. It took every piece of strength not to gaze upwards, for her eyes to lock into his, scared of what might happen if she did so. I'm here, Kitty, was all she could muster for now. After a few more minutes, his breathing calmed, mirroring her own, and released the grip on her hand. She gave it one more stroke before bringing it back down around his waist. She wanted to tell him that he was loved, and that she was here for him, no matter what. No. Instead, they pulled each other in tighter until the sea was calm once more. 
She knew once the stars had gone to bed and the sun came out, he'd be gone. End of chapter one. Make sure you keep an eye out for chapter two coming soon. Thank you.